Mic check. What's going on? Let's get it. Look, we're doing candidates recap. This is round four. Of course, round five is literally going to be in like two hours from now. So we actually had to hop on to give you some content. We didn't even stream last night because we had to take, you know, some more uh, sleep, some Z's, get some Z's, right? Get some rest. So, um, yeah, we didn't stream last night, but today we're actually going to drop the video this morning, 645 in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the morning, making sure we get this content out to you. So let's get it. So this is round four. And in round four here, we're going to start with uh, with uh, the drawing games. So we're going to look at Ding, Loren, and Fabi. Um, no bloodshed here with uh, this game. Uh, in fact, I'm going to look at it from Ding's point of view. Actually, Fabi, because it's very instructional of what happened, actually. Um, so, okay, we got a, a Queen's Gambit decline, right? Uh, QGD. Actually, but this is like some type of Rogozin, Nimzo. Like, it's literally everything, right? It's a Rogozin, right? So it started as a Queen's Gambit decline and then it ended up being a Rogozin, uh, Nimzo Indium, Knight to C6. Or Queen's Gambit, whatever. Like, it's literally where goes and it's nice. But, okay, E3, castles get out the way. This is all theory. Queen E2. 95, I actually don't remember. I mean, maybe I haven't been that deep in these files anyway. Because it's not an opening I play as much. But 95, I have to go see and look. I'm um, sure this is probably a move, though. Let's see what else they have. B6 and 95 is moves. B6, I remember. But 95, I actually don't. C5, and now the bishop is trapped. But he's going to be able to get out. Um, Because, I mean, easy, easy way to get out. Bishop takes C3. So we play b6. We want to chip away at the structure a lot. Bishop to d2. And then knight to c4. So just bring in the pieces in. The knight on the rim is dim, right? Pretty easy move. To uh, a3. And then we have to get rid of uh, some pieces here. So we take, take, take. And then we reach this position. And he goes a5, which uh, stops. Uh, not stops, but uh, prevents uh, some type of b4 sometimes. But it's just gaining some space. And you want to play bishop a6 too to get rid of your, uh, your bad bishop. This bishop's terrible. So you look at this basically like a French structure. And you haven't played c5, which is not the easiest. So... In fact, that's exactly what this is. It's like a French that you didn't play C5 in, and you're trying to get the bishop outside the pawn chain here. So, honestly, it's a super equal game. But after A5, uh, rook to C1, bishop A6, we do trade uh, off the bishops, and takes and takes and castles. We have a very level, very boring game. Nothing's really going on, right? I mean, same pawn structure, same everything. This one's definitely going to be zeros, right? Now, of course, they're going to play on rook A8, queen B3, rook to C8, and he's allowing him to take a pawn, He's allowing Ding Loren to go up a pawn. And in fact, he does. Rook takes c3, queen takes queen b6. Uh, his intention is go queen c2 and say, okay, whatever. Actually, a4 first, and then queen c2. So the idea here is I'm down a pawn, but a pawn does not say that the game is over. It never says that, right? So, I mean, that never, but in very rare cases, does it say that? So Fabi's down a pawn. You see, the engine it says it's still equal because this is not a pawn like I'm active. The rook can get around and like you have to deal with this. And so what I'm down a pawn says Fabi. But you're going to have to figure this one out. So b3 from white, a takes b3, knight takes b3, knight e4. So nice move. Of course, queen f2 is not going to be played. But it could be some stuff like knight c3, knight e2. We just want to annoy him. Maybe even rook a8. So a4, and then you see a queen to c4. Nice move. Trying to trade, which they do. Trade. Knight c5, trade. And then we have a, a legit draw here for real. They say um, all rooking games are drawn, right? But you have to do the drawing there. It's not easy. You have work to do still. So if we look at this, three, four, five, six pawns for white versus three, four, five pawns for black. Okay, so we go rook a8. We're trying to take on a4 and then a rook to b1, stopping that. Obviously, that's pretty obvious. And then we go king f8. We're going to get the king out. Rook takes a4. It's going to be coming next. So he stops it. Rook b4 to defend and attack. We push it. And then we, we're going to end up pushing it again so we can take this pawn. That's correct. C2, there it is. Bang, bang. And then this is just a draw. Rook B2, Rook A7, and like trying to get this pawn. We'll put the king in front of the pawn. He goes this way. He goes down. He's trying to come back and through, the, through the back way here, but this is uh, going to be a draw once again. I like this sequence right here. Now, of course, let me pause it. You can pause the video if you'd like. And uh, it's black to move here, right? What do you think Fabi did in this position? Do we take the pawn or do we play H6? Or do we play another move? It's up to you, but black to move. What do you do? You can put your answers in the comments. Um, so, uh, but Rook takes C5. Um, actually, no, he played King E7. <laughs> but he's going to play Rook C5. So he's going to play G6 first, though. So he actually played King E7. This is actually a move I didn't expect. But G6 and Rook takes C5 are very nice. 
King e7 is really nice too, though, but I mean, it's, it's whatever. You can kind of play it multiple, multitude of moves. King e7 after rook takes, obviously, you don't take here because you'll lose a second pawn. Then you'll probably be losing for real. But g6 actually stops a lot of this. And now we have a nice structure where we're going to have f5 kind of unlock. h5 you can't play yet, especially, but if I do rook takes c5, you, can, you can't play it. You can't play it. So now we have more of a level looking draw, something easier for us to really draw here. So he plays f5. I thought this was brilliant by Fabi, stopping this from pushing. You can't do anything. We can't do anything. So he puts the king on f6 and pawns on the same side here. This is for sure going to be a draw. And even if we trade these three for like these three, and you got this center pawn. That's cool. But now I can do a Philidor position, which is a, a position you should know. And we actually have covered it in, uh, I think, one of the in-game, uh, Devoretsky in-game playlists here on the channel so make sure you check that but yeah so king f3 rook c4 and he says you're not doing anything big fella at least not on the fourth rank so um okay g3 and he just goes back and forth we got a little shuffle city g5 takes takes two now it's two versus three he says no trades because if you trade you just lose so none of that so he takes now we're down to one pawn and we just have some maneuvers making some moves check it up check it up again check it up Get out the way. Check it up. Take check check takes. All right. He just repeat it here because this is gonna be a loose. I mean, this is gonna be a draw. And the reason for it is like, why didn't he take the pawn back? Well, of course you want to know your end game. So after takes takes takes, right? This is just a clear draw. It's basically already <laughs> in Philidor position from this right here. That's funny. Oh man, that's kind of funny. Usually you want to be behind like this and checking because there's no shelter. But I mean, shoot check. Actually, there was black to move. Yeah, you just start checking. That's it. Yeah, and we have a classic Philidor position before we even had to do it. Usually, you have to wait till you, you know, you get to the third rank with the rook. And then when he pushes, then you go to the back rank and start checking into Oblivion. But here, it didn't happen. He didn't, didn't have to. In fact, so that's Fabi versus Ding, and this ended in a quiet draw after a repetition. Ding, Loren, and Fabi. Then we have Duda and Rajabov. This was a nice draw as well. Okay, so let's see it. E right, E4, E5. We got uh, the uh, Berlin, Roy Lopez here, Berlin, H6. Very strong. I mean, Berlin is very solid and tested, used in the World Championships and stuff like that. Ikaru loves it, too. I mean, it's a very strong opening, rock solid, very rock solid stuff. So um, kind of hard to get bigger advantages here if you don't know what you're doing. 97, though, I thought this was pretty good. This is all theory, 97. You do want to open up. So staying in Rajabov's uh, style, to say the least. Takes, takes, opening the file with a smile here. Rook G8, and Bishop H3 stuff is going to be fun. Bishop takes, queen takes. So, of course, knight is not hanging, but um, it is a little bit pressure on it. Knight h4, trying to uh, control f5 or stop you from playing f5 right now. But you, stay, you still can play it anyway. Like, you literally could just play it right now. But he played rook g8, king h1, and he said, I'm going to get my king out of the center too. We have a capture of pieces, a trade. Stop, look at the structure. White definitely has an, an emo, a better intact structure. Just a better game, it looks like. Because he has the better pawn structure, but black has prospects. Open g-file. These pawns aren't as bad as they look, and they can easily be undoubled if you uh, push these up. So it's it's a fairly an equal game. Engine says, um, right, 0.64, as you see on the screen. They like moves like h3 and stuff like that. Queen f3 from um, from Duda. I'm assuming just connecting the rooks. f5, and also stopping f5, right? But, uh, or trying to stop f5. And it's funny that, you know, oh, queen f3, you can't play f5. And then he plays f5. <laughs> anyway, bro. I'm going to play f5 anyway. He takes f5, rook to g5, threatening the f5 pawn. f6? Oh, I'll probably just go knight f5. Yeah, let's go knight f5. So a4, he takes it. We take back. And look at this. And look at this, guys. We've got to have ourselves an in game. A rook in game with, with the same amount of pawns, even though this structure is like garbage right now. Like 100% premium garbo. garbage. This is not a good structure. But. We have activity of the pieces, and like white is not doing a lot either. And like we can attack this one. We can play f3 probably later. Maybe even try to take the file and get the second rank. It's lots of things to do. Rook a e1, e5, rook e5. Says trade him. And rook e8, we go back. Trade him. Take that one. Now we got rid of that one. And we play king d7. Don't allow this. And we're also going to bring the rook to the file. There it is. He says, I get one, you get one. Snap, snap. And then c5. And this is just going to peter, peter out to a draw, guys. Look at this, right? Very easy. You get one, I get one, and then they repeat. Check, 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 and that was it. Like that was a, that was it. Draw here. 
So another draw, you know, Berlin, very easy stuff, draw, nothing there, nothing to see, right? Then we go look at the Richard Report Hikaru game, right? So this one was a draw as well, e4, e5, knight of three, knight c6, bishop e5, knight of six, d3, bishop c5. Berlin already, you know, right? like Berlin. And of course, it's Hikaru too. Hikaru is great with the Berlin, so. Okay, but here we go. Bishop takes, d takes, castles, and bishop back to d6. He's played this already too. I think this was in one of the earlier rounds. I don't remember, but. He's played this a lot, so he's just like in prep. He knows he knows what's going on, right? Bishop g5, h6. We got the bishop here, but it's not enough sometimes. G5, bishop to g3, and bishop to e6. This actually looks like it hangs upon, but actually in some cases it can. I wonder what happens on knight takes though. Play h5. Wow, yeah, this is some some theory that I'm not familiar with. I'm definitely not familiar with that. I do know if bishop takes though, you have a uh, takes and queen d4, right? Takes takes queen d4. Right, so that's the whole idea. But knight takes is uh you can't do the same idea because obviously the bishop's on e5. So h5. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting there. But okay, g5, bishop g oh let me refresh. So bishop e6, queen goes to d2 with knight c3 options. I go knight d7, or he goes knight d7. All right, you know, we go knight d7, chat uh, knight d7. Defending e5, f6 is a move too. That's what he plays now after the d4 push. Queen to c3, probably have to take. He does. And then this is hanging, but we don't want knight f5, so you, you, you understand queen e7. Because you don't want this to happen. That's a super strong knight. Takes on d6, we take back. Takes on e6, we take back. We have knight, knight, rook, 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 queen, queen, same amount of pawns. What do you think this was all about to be, right? Unless somebody makes a drastic blunder, you're in a lot of trouble. Queen b3, uh, I mean, this is going to be a draw. Takes, takes, rook d1, king e7, knight d2, right? I mean, now they're just shuffling. What they're doing is they're, they are trying to progress, of course, obviously, and improve your position. Because this is not over. It's only 20 moves in. So you want to make some moves and just make sure that they're on par with what they should be doing. Knight to g5, attacking the pawn, right? And then I like from Hikaru here, playing h4, not caring about anything. As a knight takes b7, you're going to play rook to b8 and then just take on b2. So he's just like, all right, whatever. I'm just going to push these pawns up. C5 is literally just pushing all the pawns up and just being annoying. He found C5. That's such a strong move. Sheesh, man. Like C5, B6. Oh, he wants to play B6. Takes, takes. And he plays B6. Yeah, there it is. Check. King E6 takes. Rook A8 saying, oh, Knight B5. You get one. I get one. But my king is going to get very active. That's what happens. Takes. Check. King E5. And my king gets active. You have a check right here. And then 96 was sweet. I was like, dang, I was just going to take the pawn, bro. Like, I was just going to take the pawn. But 96 is like stopping him from taking the pawn because uh, knight of four is check with the um, with the fork there and game over. Rook to e1, attacking. Rook takes e4. That's going to be nice. Rook e3. He says, stop. Okay, we want none of that. Takes, takes. Takes with the pawn. We could take on e4 right now. And he does that. Take. Knight takes. We look at the pawn count. One, two, three, four for Richard Rapport. And three, four, Hikaru. King takes e3. Knight d5 check. King uh, to, over to d3. And then king f3. Once I saw this move, I was like, oh, this is a legit draw. I immediately saw the draw that Hikaru was going to go for. And he actually, well, he does it after king takes c4 first. Taking, he goes king b3 to attack it. Knight moves. And I saw this immediately. I was like, oh, he just goes knight g5, takes this pawn, takes this pawn. It's a draw. We go have lunch, right? Check, takes, takes. And then this ends in the draw. Berlin draw. Three draws, and then we got one game left. And this game right here is crazy. This game right here. Oh my goodness. This is a family channel. Oh wow. This is a family channel for real. So we're going to look at it from White's point of view. We might even put this in the Nightorf playlist. Um, boy. Okay. Let me, we're going to look at it from both sides, to be honest. So we like the Nightorf here. A Night Orf player myself. I like a very love, very, very much so have a, a love for the Night Orf. The Night Orf's a great opening. Rolls Royce of chess openings, right? And even Ferruja having great results with the Night Orf and then switching to the Carol Khan. So I'm like, oh, Night Orf, right? E4, C5, Knight 3, D6. Okay, cool. D4, take, take, Knight of 6, Knight C3, A6. I'm hype. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Young Rezzy, right? Run, young Rezzy out here playing the, uh, the Night Orf and the candidates. I was excited to see this. He plays f3, English attack. Okay, cool. Ain't nothing to it. e5, knight b3, still theory. Bishop e6, that can be played, but also, I mean, bishop e7, I like to play too. It doesn't really matter. 
Bishop e3, bishop e7, cool. Queen d2, and then here we go. He castles. Bruh. You can castle. And it is a move. I mean, 100% it's a move. It's, it's definitely a move. But the problem with this is castling early, which you're supposed to play, not even supposed to, but what I found that is the best, that helps a lot. As H5. I mean, obviously, engine likes castles too. And uh, but uh, castling, practically speaking, you get in a lot of trouble with black. Just as a human, right? The engine's oh castle. You know, you're fine. Blah blah blah. But like, as a human, you will get in trouble if you just not. You're just inaccurate. This is why H5 makes it easier for you to actually have a very good game, and it stops G4 once and for all. Castles, castles. He still had another chance to play H5, but H5 here is actually worse. Because the king is already castled. Usually you'll wait to do that. And I mean, especially in Knight or Sicilians, you wait to castle. You just have to wait. Like, I mean, in many Sicilians, you would wait just to see. But okay, you know, this is playable. This is 100% playable, especially as you see with the engine as well. This is like 100% playable. I just remember, look, this is about to be very scary. And of course, okay, Knight B to D7, he allows G4 to happen. Now, and let's look at this from, from White's point of view, right? Who would you rather be in this position right now? And then even after B5, he gets B5 off. A lot of times, you hey, look, G5, this looks scary. This is very, very scary. It feels like white is much faster than black is in these situations. And we're about to see what happens. He finally, he first goes with G5. Now, remember, whoever gets to the uh, king first and opposite side castles is going to win. So G5, B4 played. You take mine, I take yours. So 92, 98, very easy move. Then he goes F4. Open up shop, I'm threatening F5, and then F6, and I'm about to open up everything. A5. So he didn't care about none of that. He said F5. Cool, big fella. If that's what you want to do, young fella. Bishop C4 from um from Ferugia. King B1, which I really like here. I really like this King B1 because the knight needed a square. A4 is coming too as well. And you, you need to definitely have a square for the knight. A4, he does go knight B to C1 instead of knight A1. That's pretty gross. Knight B C1. D5 from Ferruja, trying to open up the position, sacrificing a pawn, maybe trying to put the knight on D6, and really trying to open up lines for the pieces. Here we go. Jan says, I don't have to take this at all. I don't have nothing to do with that. I don't care, bro. F6, open up shop, open up the file with a smile. Here we go. Takes, pawn takes, knight D takes F6. Oh, this was a sweet move, though. Wow, knight G3. Interesting. Knight G3 here. Takes, and then, okay, so which way do we take back? Interesting. Which way do we take back? Probably with the D rook. He took with the H. Okay, nice, nice, bro. Bruh. He took with the the uh, <laughs> he took with the H rook. But I guess you can always play rook G one too. So he plays A three, probably B three. Correct. King H eight, stepping out of the way. Um, what do we do next? We take the pawn. He does. Okay, take it. And knight D six. And right here, you can even watch the clip on this. After knight d6, I think they said he was sure. Um, Jan, you can see it in his facial expression and uh, his body language. He was that he was sure that after knight d6, this is what I heard in the commentary, that Ali Reza blundered. 100% blunder. That is not a move. Bruh. And the candidates, round four. It's why to move. What do you do? What do you do? And it is round four. This is a blunder. And it's a blunder because queen takes b4. I just take the pawn. It's free. And it's for me. You didn't do anything. My king is still rock solid and safe. Right now, it's already plus three. One move. Equal, plus three. Equal, plus three. Equal, down a piece. Right? And you're not even down a piece. You're down a pawn. And, it's, and the engine says, no, you're down a piece, bro. Like, no, bro, you're down a piece. Like, no, like, you're down a piece, bro. That's crazy, right? Rick CA, look at this. This is plus seven. Are you kidding me? Plus seven, bro. I mean, like, this was an absolute crush of the Night Orb. Which is, like, scary, right? Because we love the Night Orb Sicilian. I mean, that was crazy. So, Queen takes B4. 
Rook C8, that's a wrap. But uh, let's go back, though, and look at this. First off, let me flip the board. This is a scary position. You didn't get the Night Dwarf you wanted. This is what they call the Umbrella Pawn. In fact, they teach this on Chess Kid. All right, so the Umbrella Pawn, we're like, these pawns are actually defending my king. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it, says White. Yeah, these are actually defending my king. You are far away. The G file open, your king looking crazy. But knight f5, I mean, this is a disaster. But even though the engine said this is equal, this don't feel equal at all. Equal what? You know what I mean? Like, what, what are you talking about? Equal what? Right, and after knight d6, logical move. Like, think, think about it from Farouk's point of view. Knight d6 looks great, doesn't it? You want to go knight b5, knight c3, knight e4. I mean, how could this be a bad move? You know what I mean? And, and, and even allowing him to take on b4, right? And then play knight e4, something like that. You know, maybe try to like, you know, it feels like 96 should be right, but feels like you shouldn't have any vocabulary. Shout out to my coach. It's about calculation, COE, right? Uh, and um, you know how that goes, right? So calculation. Um, oh, wow. Every time I say something about calculation, somehow COE comes up. Shop Canty merch. You can use command winners because I did win my match against Shuvalova um, in the I am not a GM speech has championship. So you can um, go use c c code winners like winning, but winners. Just use the code winners and you can get 15% uh, off your order, COE. Let's go, let's go. All right, back to it. So uh, calculation, not what you feel, is, is, is the bend all be all here. So pawn takes, knight d6, queen takes b4, foot of score, gg, start a new game, basically. Rook to c8, oh my goodness, he's already in trouble. Bishop b6, right, so he, he kind of restricts the queen a little bit. You don't want any queen c7 stuff because queen c7 is a potential next move. So bishop b6 is a very nice move. Queen to d7. So now I can't go either square. Like bishop b6 was such a boss move, right? Now he, I mean, queen g4, queen h3 maybe? Queen e1, threatening e5. Rook to b8, threatening the bishop. We move it back and we can go bishop to c3 now. Knight f5, d6, boy. Okay, this is spicy. D6? My goodness. Yeah, this is a family channel, bro. Bruh. Bishop C3? We can just take him. D6 is a boss move, bro. Bishop C3 is move number one, though. Okay, so I feel better about that. Let's go, let's go. Huh. Let's go. Bishop C3 means natural. And Rook takes F6? Whoa. I mean, that's my style all day. But how does this work? Takes and Queen F1. Ain't nobody playing that. What a go, oh my good. Look at this combo. Oh my goodness. And if you take, I mean, come on now. Come on now. Get this man off the board. What are you talking about? Everything, mate. Everything, mate. Boy, that's cold. That was cold. Okay, Knight of Five, D6, Bishop D8, Bishop back to C3 now. I mean, look, I like my, I like, I like to play the Rosers and stuff like that, or the, the, the sharp Bishop G5 lines in the Night Dwarf. But this one right here, after seeing what Jan did, is very tempting to be playing the English attack now against, uh, but I mean, you, you have to face H5ers, which I would play H5, and you don't get G4 off as easy. I mean, it's still, you still have to be as accurate, but man, this is a, a phenomenal game from Jan. Queen E6, Knight to D3 attacking on E5, Knight takes E5. Knight to d5. We just back that boy up. Chill. But you don't have to do it. You can actually play something like knight f4. Oh my goodness. That's a big boy move from a big fella. That's a strong move. What on earth? It's a scary dude. Rook, knight takes. Rook takes. F6 blocking this diag. I got to get rid of that. And if you take, then we have queen takes. Jan says, I don't care about none of that. Queen e2 attacking this knight again. Knight goes to b2. Perfect. I appreciate you. He moves out the way. I wanted to do that anyway. Rook D to F8, Rook E8, now I'm threatening to take the Rook. So he moves the Rook, put pressure on the file with a smile. And then uh, F5 here, he plays F5, and now it's white to move, chat. Can you find the move that Jan played? They actually, I didn't even see it either. I'm not even going to lie to you. I was sitting around looking, I'm like, what does he do here? What does he do? Oh, okay, all right. Well, it's white to move. What do you do now? Can you find the line? Can you find it? It's white to move here. I mean, you could just see it on Farouja's face. And it was just, it was sad, man. It was a sad to see it. But, man, this is big boy chess from some big fellas, right? So here it is. Here it is. Pause the video. If you need more time, you can pause the video. And you can obviously replay it. But the move here is... Rook takes H7! Oh, my goodness. This is a family channel, right?
candidates. Oh, man. What a move. Bro, get it off the screen. He takes it. We go check. So obviously blocking here is not going to be anything. You're blocking with your face, right? It doesn't matter. So he, he steps out the way. Have a nice day. Hit him. Knight takes. How are you going to stop Rook G1? How are you going to stop all these threats I have? How are you going to stop all these checks? I got Knight H6 check. Rook G1 check. Everything check. Peace is not helping. What is your Knight doing over here? It's over 9,000. Says Jan. The power level is over 9,000. Wow. It's a lot for this position. Bishop to f6 from Ferugia trying to cover some squares, but not enough squares. Rook to g1 finishes it off. And Ferugia didn't even want any more. He didn't even want any more, bro. He didn't even want any more. Uh, obviously here. Now let's see if you can find the mate. Starts with king f8. Right. Let's see if you can find the mate here. Can you find the mate? Can you find the mate? You can put it in the chat if you found it. Or um, you can just watch. You can pause the video. Queen check. Rook g7. This have maybe here, but I think rook g7 does it. Bishop takes a mate. Very nice. Very beautiful. Very beautiful stuff. And if bishop g7, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Check. And takes. And done. And this was uh this was the rounds, guys. This was round four of the FIDE Candidates 2022. So we actually have uh, the next round starting in about actually two hours from now. So you can watch this video right now. And, um... You know, be prepared for for the next one. Today is June twenty second. As you see, round five starts at nine a.m. Um, this is where I am in Eastern time, actually, uh, for me. So it's going to start in two hours from now. So hopefully, you guys are ready. Make sure you watch the recaps and stuff. Subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Love all y'all and all that other good stuff. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.